In this video, we shall learn about what has been added onto the management of status epilepticus. So we'll be studying the management of status epilepticus recent updates. What is status epilepticus? It is simply continuous seizure activity lasting for more than five minutes or two or more seizures in this duration without regaining complete consciousness in between. This implies that if a person is presenting to the emergency or the casualty or the hospital with seizures, in, he is assumed to be having status epilepticus, but because a minimum of five minutes time does lapse between the transport of patient from his house to the hospital facility. Another thing is that initially a duration of 30 minutes was taken, but now a duration of five minutes itself has taken. Uh, has uh, replaced the original definition because a duration of five minutes has been found to be uh, perpetuating the seizure activity to an extent of so that it uh, does not remit by self and has the potential to cause serious brain damage. That is why continuous seizure activity lasting for more than five minutes is considered to be status epilepticus and has to be managed as per the management ladder. Status epilepticus per se has also been classified. On the basis of seizure activity, it can be either convulsive or non-convulsive. Convulsive status epilepticus or CSE is status epilepticus with motor activity. As we all know, convulsions are seizures with motor manifestations. And non-convulsive status epilepticus or NCSE is an abrupt change in behavior with or without subtle motor signs, for example, twitching, blinking, etc. Now, on the basis of response to treatment, status epilepticus can be refractory or super refractory. Refractory status epilepticus is that which does not respond to second line anticonvulsants, which we will see later. And super refractory status epilepticus is that which persists even after 24 hours or more of anesthetic treatment. This is, it is important here to note that not 24 hours of persistence of seizure activity. Rather, seizure activity persisting for more than 24 hours of anesthetic therapy. You have given anesthesia as well and that has been given for a duration of 24 hours but still the seizures are persisting. That kind of status epilepticus is referred to as super refractory status epilepticus and this also includes patients in whom seizures occur while on weaning anesthesia. Convulsive status epilepticus can manifest as tonic tonic clonic, myoclonic, atonic seizures or simply staring look that is absent seizures. Non-convulsive status epilepticus on the other hand can manifest as prolonged sensorial alteration. Simply tachycardia or pupillary dilatation but with preserved light reflex, a differentiation from cerebral herniation. Transient facial, periorbital or limb twitching may also be seen in some cases. Now coming on to the diagnostic ladder. The diagnostic ladder depends mainly on the clinical history and examination. You have to manage the seizures as well as do a secondary survey simultaneously. That is take a focus history and clinical examination together with this. As per this, you should first rule out febrile seizures and toxin ingestion which you will decipher from the history itself. You can rule out acute metabolic causes by doing simple blood site invest but, uh, bedside investigations which include blood glucose, ionized calcium via an ABG and serum sodium ion also with the help of an ABG or VBG. Then simple organ function tests like LFT or RFT for ruling out encephalopathies which shall have other signs and symptoms as well. For CNS infection you should do a CSF examination and neuroimaging the type of which depends upon the most likely pathology you are suspecting. For example, a non-contrast CT scan here is done for head trauma and intracranial hemorrhage. A CECT is done for XOL, that is intracranial space of the lesions and ischemic stroke. An MRI brain is done for hypoxic anoxic insults and congenital CNS pathologies. An EEG should also be done for ruling out epilepsies. Now coming on to the main part of the video which is focused on the management of status epilepticus. So now the management of status epilepticus has been divided into four tiers. 
depending upon the type of therapies we are using. The first line therapy consists of benzodiazepines and it is meant only for the acute control or cessation of seizure. The second line therapy comprising of phenytoin, valproate, levetiracetam and phenobarbitone is used for long term control of seizures. These drugs are given as a loading dose and then maintenance doses are continued further for a longer duration of time. The third line uh, therapy comprises of therapy for refractory status epilepticus and it includes midazolam infusion, thiopentone, propofol infusion and phenobarbitone bolus. And the fourth line therapy comprises of therapy for super refractory status epilepticus. So benzodiazepines, lorazepam is the most preferred drug because of relatively longer T half. It can be given intravenously or in droshes. Midazolam has a rapid onset of action and a short half-life. It can be given intravenous, intraosseous, intramuscular or intranasally. And this is the advantage of midazolam that you can prescribe midazolam inhalational therapy to your patients of epilepsies having seizures at home. The second line therapy comprises of phenytoin which is given in a loading dose of 20 mg per kg repeated at the rate 10 mg per kg to a maximum of 40 mg per kg and maintenance doses of 5 to 8 mg per kg per day. And the main point to remember here in phenytoin that it is a narrow therapeutic index and should not be given at a rate more than 1 or than equivalent to 1 mg per kg per minute. It should always be administered at less than 1 mg per kg per minute because it has the potential to cause arrhythmias and seizures itself and uh, sudden cardiac death as well. Valproate is given in loading dose of 20 mg per kg and maintenance doses with up to a maximum of 60 mg per kg per day divided in 2 to 3 dose frequency. Levetiracetam loading dose of 20 mg per kg and maintenance dose up to 60 mg per kg divided in 2 dose frequency. And phenobarbitone which is the drug of choice for neonatal seizures given in a loading dose of 20 mg per kg repeated at the rate 10 mg per kg to a maximum of 40 mg per kg maintenance doses is 3 to 5 mg per kg per day but isn't preferred much because of sedation and respiratory depression and also because of recently reported behavioral alteration so usually not given beyond infancy the therapy for refractory status epilepticus comprises of options like midazolam infusion which requires securing an airway and uh, uh, guarding the patient for his vitals, thiopentone, propofol infusion, phenobarbitone, bolus. One thing which I would like to stress upon here is that the therapy for refractory and super refractory status epilepticus does require a continuous bedside EEG monitoring because the aim of this therapy is to achieve a burst suppression pattern on EEG. Just, it's not that clinical seizures have subsided. It is that non-convulsive status epilepticus should also remit and their aim is burst, a complete burst suppression pattern on EEG. That is why this kind, these therapies should be given, preferably be given in settings where there is a facility of continuous EEG monitoring. So, midazolam infusion, thiopentone, propofol infusion and phenobarbitone bolus. And therapy for super refractory status epilepticus comprises of pharmacotherapy like inhalational anesthetics, ketamine infusion, magnesium sulfate infusion, non-pharmacological measures like hypothermia, ketogenic diet, electroconvulsive therapy, transcranial magnetic stimulation and vagus nerve stimulation, and surgery like focal cortical resection, lobar or multilobar resection, anatomic or functional hemispherectomy, corpus callosotomy, and subpile resection. Now, what if the seizures were not controlled at this level as well? Recently, there have been reports of isoflurane, which has been found as a good drug to patients who are having super refractory status epilepticus have not managed, not been get, not getting treat, uh, not with the seizures not remitting even with that. So, I guess you have been updated with the recent update in the management of status epileptic thank you for a very patient listening thanks a lot